Welcome to the series where we do hands-on exercises on Langchain, OpenAI, and Python. In this video, we will create a rag bot, which basically means that we train AI with our own custom data and use a Langchain retriever to perform semantic search on it. Here, we will follow these steps. Step one, read the data with a Langchain document loader. Step two, Split the data into smaller chunks using recursive characters text splitter class provided by Langchain. This is done so that we can feed the data easily to our AI without breaking the token limit. Step three, create vector embeddings with those chunks using OpenAI embedding algorithm and store it in the Chroma vector database. And step four, this is where we perform semantic search on the custom vector data using a compressed retriever object that we will build using a Langchain compressor and OpenAI API. If all these seem very complicated, don't worry. A lot more explanation coming up as we start working on the project. That said, let's get started. All right, so we are back at the code. We're going to need these libraries installed for this project. So I'm gonna hit play here. Start installing it and notice that besides our usual libraries in this one we need one extra one called chroma db because in this project we're going to need chroma vector db to train our ai all right so all the necessary stuff are in so i'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and now the next step is setting up the open ai api key so I kept it simple, just imported OS and set up this uh, environment variable open AI API key. And this is what Langchain looks for. So all you have to do, just replace this string with your open AI key and hit this button here. And that will make your API key part of this whole project and you can get started. That's done. Let's focus on our semantic search bot based on custom data which we're calling it RAGBOT. And uh, RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. And we have a, and I have a definition here for you. And as we move forward, I'll be giving you a lot more explanations on that. And now let's look at our imports here. We're bringing in Chroma from Langchain Vector Store, Text Loader from Langchain Document Loaders, Recursive Character Text Splitter from Text Splitter Langchain, and then contextual compression retriever from Langchain Retrievers and LLM chain extractor from Langchain Retrievers document. Don't worry, I'll explain this in detail. And then our usual cat open AI to create the models and open AI embeddings to create the vector embeddings. That said, now let's look at the structure. Here I'm following the Python object-oriented approach using a class and class methods. Right here in the constructor, I'm initializing some variables, and all these will be explained as we move forward. But for now, just look at two main parts, basically right here. Part one, we train the AI. Basically, we create a class object by instantiating this class, US Constitution Search, as you see right here. And then we call the method invoke it using the object.trainAI, this method right here. This has few steps that we're gonna be working on together. And then once the AI is trained, that's when part two comes in and we perform a semantic search on that data, our custom data. And this is how we test it, whether it's working or not. And this is also the way, I mean, let's say it's in this is US constitution, we're going to be asking these questions what is for you know first amendment second amendment etc and here we invoke that second method using the same class object us const search dot search constitution and this way we will invoke this method and this will help us perform the search that said let's start building this first method where we train the ai Okay, so at this point, I brought in the step one and step two for the first method, training the AI. At the step one, we're mainly pulling the data from the sum data folder 
and our target file would be the usconstitution.txt, as you can see right here, right there. So this is pretty much a simple drag and drop that makes it locally available. And that said, once we create this loader object using text loader from Langchain, and as you can see, this is where I'm getting it from, the text loader. And then with this method, loader.load, we are actually collecting the data and storing it in this documents variable. Once that's done, we move to the step two. We create a text splitter variable. And this time we pull in recursive character text splitter class, which is coming from right here. And this will help us split up the documents into smaller chunks. And it takes two arguments, uh, chunk size, that would be a thousand characters here, chunk overlaps, that's 50 characters. This is basically means exactly what it says overlap. So let's say in the first chunk, you have thousand characters. And then from the second chunk, 50 of them will be also loaded in here to make sure nothing is missed. One more important thing about this recursive splitter is that this is so far the best because this is the one that splits up the text by keeping its semantic meaning. You'll also find uh, in the documentation there is a just basic text splitter, but that's just uh, a little bit dumber that goes in and just, you know, collects the first thousand characters and just and shoves it in there. But this one is more intelligent. It actually main, tries to maintain the paragraphs and the words so that the semantic meaning is preserved. All right. So now also to keep in mind that you can play around with these numbers. But so far I have worked with them. I mean, this has been the perfect number for me, 1,050. In some cases, uh, you can turn it 20 also. But this has been giving me the best results when it comes to uh, searching and uh, adding with the documents, etc. Once the object is created, the text splitter, we then invoke the split documents method and pass the documents that we loaded up. That's where our custom data goes to be split up into docs. This one holds the smaller chunks. In fact, let's look at what it looks like. Also, in order for this to work, we have an empty method here. So I'm just going to have to put a pass in there. And now, we can go ahead and run it. All right. So this class is in functional. So now let's invoke it from here by calling this by instantiating this class, US Constitution Search. This guy. Let's invoke this method, train AI. This guy. Let's see what happens. All right. So we have our split up documents, basically this guy right here. And uh, since this is not a good look, so what I did, I separated it out for you so that you can actually take a look what this looks like. Basically a, an array of documents and each of them comes with the uh, metadata source, basically where this text is coming from. And this is what the, the split up document looks like. That said, now let's go continue with the next step. Okay, so at this point, we brought in our step number three. This is where we take the split up chunks and turn them into vector embeddings using the OpenAI embeddings algorithm, put them in a Chroma database. To do that, we first instantiate the OpenAI embeddings class, create this embedding function object, and then we bring in self.db, which is a class method, which we initiated right here. So right here, we're bringing in the Chroma class. We got it right here. And as argument, we're passing our docs, which is the document chunks, and then the embedding function, and providing a local directory where Chroma database will be created using this persist directory argument. Once we run this method, we will see a Chrome underscore DB folder being created, and that's where using this persist method, we're going to be writing our vector database, which will include all our custom data. We'll find it right here. That being said, let's update our class. Now, let's invoke our method here, the train AI. All right, so we ran it basically invoke this method and 
at this point, we went through all these, and if this is successful, we should see this ChromaDB folder here and inside the database. All right, so our step number three was successful. Now let's move on to the next step. This time I'm going to be bringing in our step number four. All right, in this step, we use OpenAI model and contextual compression retriever class from Langchain to create a retriever object, which then we use to retrieve our relevant documents from the vector database, but in a compressed format. So here we just create our LLM model using chat open AI, model name GP 3.5 Turbo and temperature zero because we're just creating embeds. So we don't need any creativity here. And this is where we bring in a class variable compressor and create this compressor object using LLM chain extractor. Then use this compressor, pass this object as the base compressor as an argument for this contextual compression retriever class and providing a base retriever or self.db, which is this guy right here as a retriever. And this is how we are creating this compression retriever object. And these classes we got from Langchain Retriever and Langchain Retriever's document compressor. Once this is done, we will consider that our AI training has been successful. So then we set this is trained variable, which is another class variable to true. This confirms that our training has been successful. Now, before we move to the next step, let me explain why instead of a regular retriever that Langchain provides, we are using a contextual compression retriever. What is the benefit? What does it do, etc.? Okay, so basically, these are the uh, default base retrievers that Langchain provides descriptions are right here but what they normally do is go out there and retrieve relevant documents from vector data sources but when they do they bring in a whole bunch of redundancies that we may not need might even slow us down so that's where contextual compression retriever comes in what does it do it takes in a base compressor such as a summarizer to compress the retrieved documents it also takes a base retriever, which does the initial document retrieval, such as a base retriever, this guy right here. When get relevant documents method is called, it first uses the base retriever to get the documents. It then passes those documents to the compressor, LLM chain extractor, as you saw right here. This is the one compresses the data and create a compressed version. Now, this compression is not like file compression, like zipping it up. Basically, it uses the summarizing algorithm. I mean, it looks through a whole bunch of text and summarizes them, shortens them, keeps only the most relevant ones. And finally, the compressed documents that are returned instead of the full ones. By now, data is shortened. So how does this benefit us? This way. Compressing documents reduces the amount of irrelevant text passed to agents during conversations. This helps the agent focus on the most relevant information and can improve accuracy. Fetching and reviewing full documents can be slow if they are long. Compression allows only fetching concise snippets, which can improve latency. Also, in general, compression aims to provide just enough context to prime the agent without overloading it with text. This helps balance relevance and speed. That said, now let's go to the next step, which is finishing our search constitution method. Okay, now we have our search constitution function. This function takes a user query so that we can perform semantic search on our vector database using Langchain Retriever. At first, we check to make sure that training is successfully complete, because if it is, then we take this class variable and turn it into true, is trained. So we check up on that. Is trained is false, then we're going to throw in this exception saying, AI model is not trained, please rerun train AI first. Very clear message. But if it is true, then we move to the next step, 
and then we bring in the compression retriever object that we created right here and invoke this function get relevant documents and this time we pass this user query right here and get the compressed documents right here as an answer and in the end we just do a basic check if the documents are in then we return it with the dot content because that's where the text is if not we just send a basic message saying no relevant documents found for query and now that all our methods are ready so let's update our class okay now we are ready to perform the part two the semantic search but before we do we just run it one more time just to make sure so that all our variables are up to date our database available right here now let's send the first question what is the first amendment let's run it now these are some uh, warnings that's going to come up but it is working and there you go first amendment is right here as mentioned freedom of speech right it just went ahead and collected it now about these warnings i did my research i could not fix it but let me show you in my defense i have this uh, url from the from their document i mean langchain docs so if we visit it Look at these warnings. Whenever they use this compressor that we just use, compressed contextual compression retriever, even in their document, the same error showing up. Warning, I mean. Instead, pass output parser directly to lang LLM chain. And we come here and we look at here, is the exact same warning. So if Langchain themselves could not remove this and, and include it in their doc. So I felt free to do so myself. So let's ask another question then, updating this guy. This time we're gonna go for the second amendment. There you go, second amendment is right here. And it's basically saying right to bear arms right there. So now that we, See this in action it is giving us our semantic search result correctly let's go over the whole thing one more time we're declaring some class variables and then step number one we're loading the data using text loader from langchain and then taking that data and putting through a splitter we're splitting up the docs and step three we're taking those chunks and by using OpenAI's embedding algorithm, we're turning them into vectors and then putting them into a vector database called Chroma. Once that part is done, we are using the LLM model and the contextual compression retriever to create a compression retriever object and making sure that our training is successful. So in the end, we are turning this is trained class variable to true, finalizing that our training was successful. And once all that done, then we're calling this search constitution method and passing the user query to perform a search. And here we are using that same compression retriever object and calling the method get relevant documents and passing that user query and getting the results and then returning the results. We conclude our exercise number seven, where we build a ragbot using Langchain, OpenAI, and Python to perform semantic search based on custom data. Thanks for watching.